Do you watch the news on television? How much confidence do you have that the top story is really the most newsworthy story? How much faith do you put in the media? It's what we're talking about right now. Welcome to Right Now. I'm Jennifer Shookman, and today we're talking about how much faith do you place in the media? And one of our crew members just made a really good point. He says he puts very little faith in the news because the weather is always wrong. <laughs> but today we have a special guest on. Josh Talkington is a former television reporter. Right. Um, you worked in the news business for many years. You've had radio shows. You kind of know the inside of how the news sausage is made. Is yeah, that correct? Yeah, I do. I was in it for um, the better part of 15 years or so, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure things have changed a little since I left a few years sure. ago, but for the most part, it's probably set up uh, close to the same way. Well, tell us just a little bit. This was your dream job. Correct. Just tell us a little bit about the different places you worked and the different kinds of jobs you had and yeah. what you enjoyed or didn't enjoy about them, maybe. I started out, I was kind of the typical small market to large market success story. I started out in Champaign, Illinois, mm -hmm. and I was a cameraman. I wanted to be on air, but I was awful on air. <laughs> I mean, awful. And I don't know that I've gotten much better, but I was awful on air. So I couldn't get a job on air, so I became became a photographer, so I got to go out with the reporters who were telling the stories, and I was just on the other side of the camera. Uh, then I moved to Jacksonville, uh, mm -hmm. Florida as a photographer, mm -hmm. and somewhere along the line, um, I convinced somebody they should take a shot on me, and I started reporting, then I started anchoring and hosting shows, and, and that launched me to... So wait, is that, is that a big step to go oh, from yeah. behind the camera to on camera? Yeah, yeah, I thought I was about it. You know, when you go from behind the camera, because it was such hard work to get to where I wanted to go, mm -hmm. it meant coming in and working on my own time and mm -hmm. doing fake stories to convince them I could do real stories. <laughs> and, um, and, and I remember it was just kind of this happenstance that the morning anchor, who was a really good friend of mine, mm -hmm. he was tired of getting up at two in the morning. <laughs> and so the news director, who's kind of runs the news department, he came in and, and he said, hey, for the next month or so, do you mind just filling in on the morning show? Mm -hmm. Just filling mm -hmm. in. And until we find somebody making me feel like I'm not worthy, <laughs> right? Until we find the right guy. And I did that for four years. Oh, wow. So a month turned into four years. Uh, were you ever the right guy or were they still looking during so. that whole time? I think they replaced me, finally. Uh, and I went from there to Las mm -hmm. Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, and then from in Las Vegas, we did a morning show and a lot of entertainment. Got to interview a lot of celebrities, which mm -hmm. was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then I moved from there to Tampa, which was a top 10 market. So talk about interviewing celebrities. I think that's one of the yeah. things that people probably think is really cool about being in the media, being able to talk to yeah. you know, people you otherwise wouldn't get to. It is really neat, and, and what was really cool, and some of the older folks like us will, will realize who I'm talking about, Robin Leach, who was Lifestyles mm -hmm. of the Rich and Famous. Yeah. I'm Robin Leach. Uh, he was, <laughs> Can you say that again? No. He was one of our <laughs> entertainment reporters, and he taught me how to work the red carpet and how to interview people how, on the red carpet. How to work the red carpet? Like, what do you do to work a red okay, carpet? I mean, instance, just, don't you just stand there with a the microphone? That's what I thought, right? <laughs> You'd be a great reporter, because that's what I thought. Uh, but he showed me, okay, so here comes, um, there happened to be a guy coming who was a boxing promoter, but he was there for the premiere of the new Zoom Man the Cirque du Soleil show. Got it. But he would show you, okay, we can get four stories out of him because there's this boxing match coming up next mm -hmm. week. There's this event coming up in two months. So we can shoot all these things right now, can them for the next couple of months. And so oh. we would, on the red carpet, cover the event but shoot 20 other mm -hmm. things. And so mm -hmm. he kind of showed me um, so then when that, that boxing event come up, you just pull the tape of, yeah. you know, last month when so-and-so was here, they said such and such exactly. kind of thing. Exactly. So uh -huh. he made it a lot easier for us. And so, and so that was always fun. The one thing I found really interesting about interviewing famous people, and I heard Oprah saying this, so it has to be true, um, <laughs> that every time you interviewed a celebrity, it didn't matter if it was a, a rapper or, you know, a big-time actor or whatever, after the interview, they would always come to you who, you're a nobody basically, right? right? They have millions of fans and millions right. of dollars, and they would come to you and say, was that good? Was that okay? Do we need to shoot anything again? Mm -hmm. So it was always interesting that there was still a self-image and a self-confidence Insecurity problem. almost. Though. Yeah, it was always kind All of crazy. All right, I have one question that I am dying to ask somebody who's been on the red carpet. Okay. And I, I, it's something I've always wanted to know, and you're the guy to answer it. But we're going to wait and ask okay. it right after we get back from this break. I can't wait. Welcome back to Right Now. We're here talking with Josh Talkington, who is a former news reporter, morning show host. And right before the break, you were talking about how you interview celebrities on the red carpet. And mm -hmm. I have a question for you okay. that I've always wondered. Like, how do you recognize them? Because I would imagine, like, I've stood next to people 
that are big time celebrities yeah. and didn't even know it was them. Like, well, and I'm next to one now, and I didn't realize <laughs> yeah. that it was you. You, you didn't recognize, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So how do you recognize that? The yeah, right like, do, I mean, like if they're coming up, do you like, oh, you're from that movie? Right. Oh no, that television show, or oh, you're a football player. Or, That's you know? where publicists come in. So oh. what happens is, and if you watch the red carpet closely on an award show, you'll mm -hmm. see this happening too. So they've got this poor person in front of them who's got the clipboard, mm -hmm. and they're running up ahead of them to get to you to say, hey, by the way, uh, Miley Cyrus is coming up. Oh yeah, I don't oh. want to interview her. Uh, <laughs> Miley Cyrus is coming up. Here's what she's in. Here's her new single. Here's this. Here's some talking points if you oh. need them. So you didn't have to know who they were because if their publicist was doing their job, by the time they got to you from way down there, uh -huh. you already had what you needed. So it's Miley's publicist who's making sure you get all the right information yeah. so you can promote whatever it is. Who that yeah. makes sense? Because yeah. yeah, I'm really bad with faces, and I would I'd be like, I know. It. Well, you saw me do this once. We saw a guy in. <laughs> we saw a guy where we were yeah. in the. We were out eating with your husband, <laughs> poor Dave, and we were out eating, and you saw a man who came yes. in, and you said, I know him. Yes. I recognize him. I know him. And then you said, he's either the the mayor or my eye doctor. I didn't know which you, didn't, you couldn't recognize I knew, I knew him, but I had no idea. And I don't idea think he was one. either. That was the worst part. As we walked out, I don't think he was either of those things. Probably not. <laughs> but it does say I need new classes. True. That's what it says, yeah. new contacts. All right, so that's you interviewing celebrities. Right. But when you're on the news, when you're in our living rooms every day, mm -hmm. you sort of become a celebrity. Like when people mm. meet you and things, aren't they like excited because you're on TV? Back then, yeah. And, and uh, so back then, especially in Las Vegas, because Las Vegas was kind of a celebrity feel to it. You know, it was kind of like a mini LA in a certain degree. So you would meet people out and, and they would say, hey, I watch you every morning. I enjoy the show or whatever. In the other markets, even in Tampa, not so much. It was maybe, hey, I enjoy your reporting, but it wasn't as much of a celebrity feel as it was, say, in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. Yeah. So what did people say when they came up? And you're shorter in person than you're on TV. <laughs> yeah. It was almost never nice. They would compliment your work, but they would almost always uh, ridicule you physically. <laughs> Man, your hair is way redder in person than it is on TV, and, and that must be all smoke and mirrors on TV because you look really good on TV, but in person. <laughs> oh! It was always, it's always oh. kind of a, a, the, the, like the backhanded compliment, yeah, right? Yeah, So I, I've heard other people say that too. They're so like, oh, you look much thinner in person. Yeah. They're like, so I look really fat on TV, right. what, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so that becomes an issue though, not just for women, like body image stuff, doesn't it? Isn't right. there sort of a, a um, I don't know, a, a, a mandate that you look a certain way when you're on television all the time or that you have? I would think so, yeah, and I, and I think that's gotten worse now that you see more beautiful women on mm -hmm. TV. Not that mm -hmm. newswomen and, and reporters haven't always been beautiful mm -hmm. and whatever, but now you just see it more mm -hmm. these days, mm -hmm. you know, and you see uh, the, the front of Cosmo magazine, the girl on there modeling could be the girl on Fox News or wherever, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of similarities. So I think now body image is a bigger mm -hmm. deal than it was, say, when, mm -hmm. I, was, when I was doing mm -hmm. it. Um, and it's kind of sad that that's kind of what it's come down to. And you've seen some of this uh, cyberbullying go on with a lot of different female yeah. reporters, and they will call you out on it. A lot yeah. of them will call you out on it because you have to have thick skin. And I think sometimes what people forget is, like, that woman that you're sending the, the email to or you're giving the call to, that's, that's a mom. Yeah. That's a lady who's going yeah. home who has the same feelings. And you, you think since she came on your TV and, and maybe delivered a story you didn't agree with, let me rip on her physically, mm. which, you, mm -hmm. you, you know, you could, you could rip on the story and you could right. take that but when you get the physical one and I always said that I would get 99 really good ones mm -hmm. and one bad one and the one bad one would drive me crazy mm -hmm. the craziest one I ever got uh, I had just done this great story and had exposed some things and 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 it really made some things happen in this community and I got an email from a guy who said what happened to your eyebrow he said one eyebrow <laughs> And I don't know, maybe it is. He said one eyebrow is a lot higher than the other eyebrow, and it looks like that there's a problem there. And he, I mean, for weeks would email me about my eyebrow and all this. And I've always been one that tried to bite my tongue but couldn't. Sure, and I would sure. write back things that I probably shouldn't have. But it, it, when you start picking people physically, yeah. you know, and it's the same yeah. when you're, if you're bullying somebody, if it becomes physical, you can, yeah. you can deal with like the joke telling and the, the yo mama jokes or whatever they do right. or whatever. But, but when it gets physical, right. you know, right. you're fat, you're ugly. Right. What's up with your glasses? Right. Then that's when it starts to get personal, and that's when it starts to hurt people. Well, I think I think you're right. I mean, that happens to all of us, right? I mean, yeah. the eyebrow thing is so silly when you've worked on a really big news story or whatever. But then yeah. that's the only thing you can think about, and you're yeah. getting ready to go on camera. And you're like, "This is my eyebrow." Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah I, I still struggle with that. <laughs> I still, <no. laughs> We've got an eyebrow problem. Yeah. So. 
there's a there's a lesson in those of us who are watching the media to, to sort of you know pay attention to and, and it goes now it's online it's everywhere right it's so easy yeah. to criticize people online and do it anonymously oh, yeah. um, but there's also I, I like I have a son who's getting ready to go into broadcast journalism right. and so I think about that kind of stuff for him and I already hear him saying things like about his weight or mm -hmm. you know his physical appearance or he needs to work out more or that kind of thing yeah um, and and so is that a pressure that he's feeling himself or is that a pressure that our culture sort of I think it's the pressure that that you have to feel if you're going into that because mm -hmm. you're going to get ridiculed on your voice, mm -hmm. on your look, on on everything that you do. You're going to get ridiculed mm -hmm. by somebody because I'm convinced there are people at home that just sit at the keyboard waiting for that one thing that they can take some ownership of and be anonymous behind the keyboard mm -hmm. even though their name is on the email. But they're waiting for that one moment where they can be better than you or that one mm -hmm. moment. And that's a sad reflection yeah. on them that that's yeah. all that they have. But, um, but yeah, if you're going into that industry, uh, you have to be willing yeah. to have the very thick skin and take some of that that ridicule one of the things that um, I've heard you talk about before um, is that that the way we see news mm -hmm. is like not what we would expect like I just right. expect that the story that's mm -hmm. the top story is the most important and most newsworthy story right but that's not exactly how it works always is it well you think about how many times have you just at five o'clock or six o'clock or eleven or whatever kind of just flipped through the stations and maybe you've noticed and maybe you haven't that maybe the top story is different mm -hmm. on this station mm -hmm. and that station mm -hmm. and this station and and so what it tells you is that the human element deciding what the news story is for the day sometimes can dictate whether or not that's news or that's not news so think of it in terms of say this show when you're coming up with topic ideas mm -hmm. you get together with producers and you talk with people or maybe the guests and here's our topics it works much that same way mm -hmm. in the news department uh, so, so they're generating the news? Like, they're generating the news? I guess in essence, you could think of that. They, they, mm -hmm. they come up with these enterprise stories, as they call mm -hmm. them, you know, just these creative stories. So you get a group of people, the reporters, the producers, mm -hmm. the executive producers, mm -hmm. the assignment desk, who would be the people, if you called the station right now and you mm -hmm. had a story, they'd send you to the assignment desk and they'd take all your information. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you were trying to pitch an idea or whatever, mm -hmm. you'd talk to them. So they all get together in a room mm -hmm. in the morning and in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and they talk about, okay, reporter, what are your three ideas for today? Well, as a former reporter, I would drive to work with no ideas, <laughs> but on the way there, I would come up with five, mm -hmm. right? Maybe they weren't news and maybe they were. And if I had a good enough one, they would say, that's a good one. Why don't you chase that down today? Can you give us an example of what that might be like? I um... Mean Man, it was some crazy stuff. I, I used to drive, and, and I had an old photographer friend who said, if you don't have a news story, just roll your window down and listen, and if you hear things mm -hmm. happening, this was his thing, I don't mm -hmm. know why. So I would drive, and if I would hear construction somewhere or whatever, mm -hmm. I would go in and say, hey, they're doing construction down and whatever. I hear people might be angry about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they were or not, mm -hmm. but I hear people might be angry. Yeah, go chase that down and do that. So things like that, that you would come and you would put a twist on because you didn't mm -hmm. want to be thrown out of the meeting for not having story ideas. Right, because that's your job as a reporter is to have ideas, job. right? That's your job. you got to chase it down so you always wanted to chase the mm -hmm. lead story mm -hmm. you always wanted to do better than your competition mm -hmm. or even the other people in that room mm -hmm. so you would try to come in with all these mm -hmm. ideas and these mm -hmm. stories uh, now when breaking news happens when there's a, a, a shooting or they always said if it bleeds it leads and that's kind of the old phrase from really the 80s it's not as much anymore um, and so if there's breaking news that happens you'll pretty consistently see across the board everybody's leading with that big mm -hmm. breaking right, news story right. but it's more kind of the enterprise stories that mm -hmm. hey why did channel 30 have that and channel 12 didn't well somebody came up with that idea mm -hmm. you know so when you say um, you know like I was driving by and I heard the construction and I think there were people angry about it I know you never did this but could a reporter sort of fake the story like nobody was really angry but now there, he's been assigned that by his news director so he has to invent something how do you or? know I never did that <laughs> do, I know you never did this like I'm up here I know you are above this and this is so far beneath you I know you never I, did I've this. never done news so no but no, um, I think what happens is a lot of times reporters get in a jam so they've got the five o'clock, you've got deadlines all day. So you've got a five o'clock deadline coming up. And if you're at a really competitive market, you're doing a fresh story for say the noon, the five, the six, and you've got to leave them something for the 11. Wow. So you have to have a new twist on everything. And unfortunately, a lot of times it turns into, I don't have anybody to interview for this. Mm -hmm. It may be a pretty good story, right. but I don't have anybody to interview. And that's when you see those dreaded man on the street interviews that <laughs> don't really make a lot of sense for the story. Hey, we're, we're talking about this political campaign. Let's go interview people in the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> right, it doesn't really go with the story, but right. that's because of the deadline, what you have to resort mm. to. And so I, I don't 
I do think that there are reporters who probably make up stories. I think that's a, a, a rare case. But I do believe that there are a lot of stories that don't get uh, the quality they deserve mm -hmm. because of the deadlines that so many people are Got under. It. And you're 20 minutes from air and Got you it. don't have anybody interviewed and you just jump out and grab people. Got I think it. that happens more than you so would think. So are, are news stations watching the competition? Constantly, yeah. Their TVs uh -huh. set on it all, all across okay. the room. Yeah. Because yeah, I had we had an incident where um, we had those inflatable blow up Christmas things, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, there was some a football coach who drove his football team around and they slashed him, and we oh. were one of the people that did that. And so you slashed what, them? I didn't know that the kids did, and the football coach endorsed wow. it or something. Wow. I, I don't remember all the details, but so the the main station in town or the big whatever one of the stations in town came and asked to do an interview, and I didn't mm -hmm. want to say anything negative. The guy had already apologized and promised to repay it and things, but. Right. I basically told him what happened. And that aired on the 5 o'clock news, I think. Yeah. And then between 5 and 6, there came a reporter from the next station. Yeah, they and saw then, it. You know, okay, go get that yeah. lady. She'll yeah. talk. <laughs> and you know what's really crazy? And we talked about this before. If you're on a big story, like a big breaking news story, say uh, something awful happens, mm -hmm. a kid gets kidnapped or whatever, so we will all be there. Mm -hmm. So you say in a big market we'll have four or five stations there. And your news director will expect somehow, by some mm -hmm. miracle of God, that you will get some element of that story that nobody else there got. So, But you're all standing outside the same there, person's house? Same place. The and they will hope... Well, why didn't you interview the mom of the kid? Well, nobody else did either, mm -hmm. but you should have been able mm -hmm. to. And so there's just so much pressure there that you should have been able to. Everybody had the grandma. Why didn't you have the grandma? And so mm -hmm. reporters are under so much pressure to get, and it's even probably more so now than I was in the industry because mm -hmm. now with, with Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and let's get it on right away, right mm -hmm. away, right away. Live updates on our website. Probably yeah, yeah. more pressure. Yeah. And then you worry about the quality. Yeah. You've only been there 10 minutes. How are you already shooting a video about mm -hmm. it when you have no information. Mm -hmm. And so that pressure has to be way more than it ever was when I used to mm -hmm. be in the business. Now you talked about one of the things that um, you used to do was when you went into a situation, uh -huh. you'd go in with your camera rolling. And, this is true. And talk a little bit about that and maybe how you felt then and now how you feel now. I feel back. awful about it now. <laughs> in fact, I, I was watching a movie the other night and there was a scene where the, the news media was there and of course they're portrayed about as poorly as Christians are in movies. <laughs> and, and the guys come running in and they've got the camera and they're trying to interview people and I thought well that's what I used to do that, you know I would show up on scenes mm -hmm. camera rolling with the assumption I'm going to get kicked out at some point but let's at least document mm -hmm. me getting kicked out you know so we can we got it we got it good we'll put that on so with this what kind of was the story any kind of story this would be if it was any it? sort of controversy mm -hmm. that somebody didn't mm -hmm. want to be interviewed about got but it. they happened to be somewhere in public where it wasn't illegal for me to show up with uh -huh. a camera with a microphone mm -hmm. nothing illegal about mm -hmm. it but just was it the best approach mm -hmm. you know and and now you look at it and say probably not I mean was it worth getting a reaction of you getting kicked out to show that this guy is a jerk when maybe he's not really a jerk maybe right. he just doesn't want to talk about this right. there's more and, to the story or his lawyer advised him not to talk or right and yeah. the bad news is then you get back to the station and you're the hero great job nobody else got that guy mm -hmm. well you didn't really either right you didn't right. really get him either you just got right. video of you getting kicked out of a right. place that you probably should have had more respect right. than, than you had when you got there so I feel bad about mm -hmm. those things I'm glad you brought that up thank you <laughs> <laughs> I feel awful about those things, yeah. Yeah, so is there a line of privacy when, mm -hmm. when there's news, and who gets to decide? So if, yeah. I, if I'm in the news for something bad I did or something good I did and yeah. you know, people want to talk to me, uh, do I have a right not to talk, and is that, or is it because I'm news I need to? Or Where's the line on that? I guess that's really, really tough, you know, because they're going to camp out at your house, mm -hmm. right? They're going to mm -hmm. show up at your door. They're going to knock on your door. Uh, you're going to go to the door and say, I just really don't want to talk about mm -hmm. it. Odds are, especially if it's bad, mm -hmm. odds are you going and saying, I really don't want to talk about it. They're videoing to put that on saying, mm -hmm. I, so even if you're trying to be the nice one in the mm -hmm. equation and say, listen, I respect your job. I understand what you're doing, but right. I would rather not be on TV. You saying that will be on TV, TV. right? Mm -hmm. um, I think what's really unfortunate, especially when I look back, when you, when you look at things like, say, um, soldiers dying mm -hmm. overseas and their families mm -hmm. happen to, there happens to be a local tie mm -hmm. in your community. Uh, a lot of times we would go after that like rabid dogs. Mm -hmm. We would show mm -hmm. up at family at the family's house and could you imagine the grieving they're going mm -hmm. through? And we became, well, I can just speak for me, I became numb to all that pain mm -hmm. because I was showing up with a job to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so your, your ethics weren't probably where they mm -hmm. should be because you're thinking I have to get this in the next hour. Mm -hmm. And so you're knocking on doors of people who just lost someone that you probably should have never knocked on that mm -hmm. door, you mm -hmm. know, but because of the competition mm -hmm. and I'm not making excuses for anything I did, but sure. because of the competition, 
somebody's going to go to the door. Mm -hmm. and, and so you figure it might as well be you. Mm -hmm. because and your you boss wants it to be you. <laughs> your boss really wants it to be you, yeah. So I have a, um, a friend who started out in, in news and um, she said she used to have to interview people like right after the fire, like their houses just burned down right. and she'd have to come up and stick a camera and a microphone in their face. And she said, I just couldn't do yeah. it anymore. Um, and so is there, do you have to sort of separate yourself to be in news yeah. or is it, I mean, can Christians work in news? Oh yeah, I, I most definitely believe there are a lot of Christians who are in news and I think they struggle probably with a lot of these same things. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I think you see Christians in news or even if you took the Christian element off the table, if you see just good people in news, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I think you see them getting a lot of stories that nobody else will get mm -hmm. because I think that there's a trust element with somebody who you mm -hmm. feel like has a real sound ethical background. But it's always that difficult thing because it is news. Yeah. So, you know, something horrible happens, it is news. They're gonna to try to get the story. And uh, I guess folks just have to realize the pressure those people are under to get the right story out. Yeah, and, and and let's be fair too. We do some of this stuff does need to be investigated. So maybe a soldier yeah. that died, um, if it's just an ordinary situation, right. that's one thing. But sometimes the story the government's telling is different than the story that his right. buddies and you know the situation were telling, and there might be yeah. more to it. And somebody does need to investigate that right. to keep things in check. And mm -hmm. that's the job of a reporter. To and do then that. here's the other question that I always come back to is, okay, so if you were in the situation of the person who's on screen with people chasing them down with the cameras and all that. Yeah. Would you want your story told? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But we as viewers are hungry for that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, the viewership has created what reporters have to do. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to watch that story. Mm -hmm. We want to watch the train wreck. We would never want our train wreck to be the story, mm -hmm. but we desperately want to see it. So here it So comes instead of blaming it. you as the reporter, I need to point the finger back at me I'm and just say, trying to take all blame off me is what I'm trying to do at this point. <laughs> and say, no, I mean, but there is a certain yeah, degree, no, right? I, I have Christian friends who say you should never watch the news. They just yeah. believe that you shouldn't. Um, do you have mm -hmm. thoughts on that? I know you, you now are working in ministry. Yeah. And you're working with a lot of young kids and mentoring them. And then what do you tell them about watching the news or not watching the news? Uh, we don't have many of those conversations about whether or not they should watch the news or not. I, now, on a completely unrelated thing, I tell them they shouldn't get their value and their worth from what they watch on TV, which is kind of related and kind of not related. I would just say it's important to remember that the, the, story, the story that you're watching um, especially if it's not complete and especially if it doesn't have two sides or sometimes three or four sides, it's probably not the whole truth. Mm -hmm. It's probably the quickest story that they could get in the time frame that they had. Mm -hmm. Not to hold that against the reporters because they sure. have a job to do, uh, but it's probably not the whole story. Mm -hmm. And so you might flip to Fox and get one story and flip over here to CBS and get another story. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason because of the time constraints and, and all of those things. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think Christians shouldn't watch the news. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that, that they have to be very careful what they believe as the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And you know that more from national news than anything else. Yeah, well, and I think sometimes the news leads with bad things, not positive things, and right. so it can affect, you know, how we think about things. Yeah. Um, what about Christians in the news when we see them in the news? Are they treated fairly, would you say, or are mm. they not? Are they, you know, what would you say if we see a story about a Christian, how much of that yeah. should we believe or think is I don't fair? think so. You know, I think a couple of things happen there. I think whenever there's a story about Christians, typically they, they go and interview somebody uh, like a priest or somebody from the Catholic Church. Even in the Christian world, does that represent my beliefs? If I'm not Catholic, if, I, if say I'm Baptist, does that re represent my beliefs? So I think sometimes the, the Christians that they use to represent all Christians in mm -hmm. stories maybe aren't the best representation to have like that broad stroke on them. Mm -hmm. The other thing is uh, most Christians are made to look crazy. <laughs> Whether it be on a TV show or yeah. on the news, they're made to look nuts, yeah. right? It's just, it's almost like the old school, big hair, crazy screaming person, uh, whether it be the man or the woman, um, they're always made to seem nuts. You think they're one step away from dancing with snakes and whatever, but they are made to look extreme and kind of crazy. And, and, and I think that's unfortunate because most of us, I'm not saying some aren't that way, right. but most of us aren't that way. Right. Most oh, of us are of pretty normal right. people. Right. right. Fairly yeah. normal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they make better news stories when you get the there crazy ones, right? And, and to be fair, that's probably not just Christians. It's probably people, any people of faith. They yeah. take the most extreme examples. Right. Um, and the things that we remember as Christians is that there's such a wide depth mm. and breadth of how we practice our faith that those we see on TV don't necessarily represent that. But yeah. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, but first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about faith and media and how much faith should we put in our media. That's a really good 
welcome back. We've been talking with Josh Talkington about faith in the media and where should you put your faith. And so let me broaden this out to rather than just news, which is sort of what we've been talking about. But where as Christians do you think we should put our faith in the media? Wow. Where should we look for sources? Where should, should we go online? Should we uh, look for television, for newsprint? Mm. Where is the most reliable and maybe most well-researched balanced story? If you could figure that question out. Like if you could figure out the great answer to that question, because I, I struggle with that. Mm -hmm. I gave up news for a long mm -hmm. time, um, but now I find myself, I'll, I will watch multiple outlets mm -hmm. and then try to figure out what I believe, or I'll read multiple sources and, mm -hmm. and you know, places like Drudge Report, they're not always unbiased, but mm -hmm. you feel like you get more information where you can decide. I know places that like to say, you know, we'll report it and you decide it, but that maybe isn't always the case. There's a slant to it or a lean to mm -hmm. it. I would just suggest if you really want to know the truth, you have to have multiple sources mm -hmm. to go with. So when we started out, you kind of talked about the news director is the one who decides yeah. what the news is. What mm -hmm. you're almost saying is that as Christians, we should be our own news director and yeah. sort of investigate the stories ourselves yeah. and, and, and do the research to figure out what you what just said it way working. better than I did, but yeah, they should, <laughs> they should do and, and think about it in these terms, because you broadened it out from just news, even you doing this show. Mm -hmm. um, you're influencing somebody at home. Maybe, maybe there's a young lady watching who, who says, man, I want to do that. And she's mm -hmm. seeing you as a Christian woman saying, I could be on TV mm -hmm. and be effective mm -hmm. and be influential. So, so I, I think everybody in the media outlet, everybody on television or radio, you, you've got this opportunity. And you just have to figure out how you want to use yeah. it. But And I would go one step further, Josh. I think you're exactly right. But we all have influence. Yeah. And it's how we use that influence that's so important. What we'd love to have you do is influence us. So let us know what you're thinking. You can get to us on Facebook at uh, Right Now Topics. You can email us at rightnowtopics at gmail.com. Or find us on Twitter at um, Right Now 57. And we'd love to hear your comments. We'd love to have you participate and just be a part of this show. Thanks for watching. And come back and see us again next time.